Hi, I'm Matt, and this is an informational video on how to build a steam turbine by Doc Dave. Oh, and by the way, while your turbine is disassembled and being rebuilt, make sure that you have a backup fave. The first thing that you need to do is make sure that you have all the items that you're going to need for your build laid out in front of you on a nice flat workspace like this. You have your mesh, your scissors, your paper clip, pliers, wire, your turbine, and of course, your flame. So now, after you have all your tools laid out, you need to cut your mesh. I cut mine just about a, over a half inch wide and at least as tall as the tank for stability purposes. This is what your mesh should look like after it's been cut. As you can see, it's about a little over a half inch wide and just as long as the tank. Now we're going to oxidize our mesh. You want to make sure you get it evenly distributed all the way across the mesh. This is what it should look like when you're finished. Once your mesh is nice and evenly oxidized, you want to begin by folding over one of the ends just slightly. Once it's folded over, just keep folding it over until you're all the way at the end of your mesh. Now it should look kind of like a flat cylinder. Take it between your thumb and pointer finger and just start rolling it until you get a nice cylindrical shape. Once you're finished, you'll notice that it is no longer flat and now you have a nice circle on each end. Now you want to take your paper clip and you want to unfold it so that you have one long flat end. Take your paper clip and push it down the center of your wick so that you have a nice hole going down the center. You can roll it between your thumb and forefinger to make sure that it's nice and tight. Repeat the entire process if you wish to make a dual coil atomizer. I like to give my wick a quick once over with the flame afterward for stability reasons. This makes the wick stiffer when you're building your coil. Always remember, fire can be dangerous. One of the most important things when building your coil is the placement of your wire. You want to place it between the screw and the center post. When you're done, it should look something like this. Notice that the wire is not contacting the center post and is completely hidden underneath the screw. Now take your wick and place the paper clip back through the center. Make sure that you leave a little bit of the paper clip exposed on the end so that your wick will not be touching the bottom of your tank when you're finished. Place your wick with the paper clip still in it into the wick hole. I like to begin my wraps on the outside of the tank. When you're making each wrap, you want to make sure that you loop the ribbon wire around your wick and to the inside of the center post. Once you position the wick close to the bottom, pull it tight to make your first wrap. Repeat this process until you have three wraps on one side and four on the other. I like to turn the tank as I do this. Once you have your desired amount of wraps, use the head of a screwdriver or a needle or other fine point device and move your coils around so that the last coil ends at the height of your washers. Once you have the coils where you want them, you need to work the ribbon wire in between the two washers. Use your thumb and pointer finger to hold the wick just off of the center post and your thumb holding the wire in place while you tighten down the center post. It doesn't need to be tight just until you feel resistance. Clip off the excess wire making sure that you leave a little bit for maneuverability later. Now remove your paper clip and you should be left with your wick extending out the top like this. Next, place the steam turbine onto your mod. We're going to be checking our coil for hot spots. 
but since we're doing this with no juice in the tank, I like to place a single drop onto my insulator and onto the wire going from the mesh to the center post. We're going to use short bursts on our button. And what we're looking for is a nice even burn all the way down. You'll notice that my entire coil is burning evenly from top to bottom. If you had a hot spot, you would see parts of the coil that are not lit or brighter than others. Now that your first coil is done, if you wish to make a second coil, repeat this process until you get to the point where you are ready to attach your ribbon wire to the center post. Now that you have your second coil built, take your finger and place it over the washers where your first coil is attached. Go ahead and loosen your center post. Using your pointer finger to hold the wick in place and work your second coil in between the washers. Take your thumb to hold it in place and tighten your screw. You should now have two coils attached to the center post of your steam turbine. Remove your paper clip from the center and place your battery back into your mod. Again, snip off any extra wire that you have. Place a single drop of juice, just like we did before. And begin pulsing your device looking for hot spots. Notice both coils have a nice even glow all the way down. Cut off any extra wire that you have sticking out. And trim your wicks down to the top of the screw. Go ahead and take your juice and fill your syringe. And fill your steam turbine. Once it's full, put a couple drops on your wicks to make sure that they're nice and juiced. And place the cap back on the top of your turbine. Now you're ready to enjoy your Doc Dave steam turbine. I'm Matt, and that's how I build my Doc Dave steam turbine.